Okay, here are some few examples, right? First, we want to identify if it's SM1, E1, E2, or the above, right? And then um, also we show the products. So the first one, we see here, this is a strong base and it's a strong nucleophile. This is a secondary IQ here, right? Obviously, two things can happen here. E2 and SN2 reaction, right? So we write it down. SN2 can happen and E2 can happen. For SN2 product, all we have to do is there's no 3D here, so we don't have to draw the water inversion, we just draw the products. Simply, what's attached? OH is attached. And that's it. Right? If you want to know how this happened, just simply draw sodium here, OH here. This is the leaving group. This is going to attack it. And that's it. You have OH. Right? The E2 product, if that goes away, you have just one product, and that's the elimination. That's it. The E2 product. Okay? That is done. The second one, this is a weak nucleophile. It's a weak base. So we recognize that only one that does a weak nucleophile, a weak base, is an SN1 reaction. Okay? So we know this is SN1 reaction. But something is slightly off here. We see that the bromine is in the secondary position. And we know that carbocation wants to be where? At the most stable position. So let's draw the intermediate for this. The intermediate for this is simply what? That. Because bromine is leaving. Yes, heat. This sign over here represents heat. You see that sign? It represents heat. There's heat on the bottom here, which tells us something. It tells us that this is going to get heated up and get rearranged. So there's two things might happen here. There's something called a metal shift or a hydride shift. Over here, what I'm going to do is a hydride shift. All I'm doing here is I'm going to rearrange this molecule. I see there's a hydrogen here. I'm going to take this hydrogen and move it where the carbocation is. It's called a hydride shift. By taking this hydrogen and moving it here, this molecule now is not gonna, it's not gonna be like that. It's gonna have a couple color in here and have the new hydrogen here. Let's represent the hydrogen in red so that we see the movement. Now this hydrogen just moved to here. Once I move the hydrogen, now I have carbocation at its most stable position. Then I can continue to do the SN1 reaction. Attack the water, I end up with a two sherry alcohol. Right. By doing that, I also make a very stable molecule. I have that, right, which is attached here. I have that. Right. And of course, two products. So this is my two E2 products here, and this is my SN1, I mean E1 products, I mean. This is my E1 products, and I have my SN1 products for that problem, okay? This is called rearrangement, right, okay? And I use a method called hydride shift to rearrange. There's two types, hydride or metal shift. Yeah, I use hydride. Okay, the last one, I have a Fisher projection here. And I have sodium sulfide here. And this, in this case, always break this apart, showing that this is a negative sign again. And over here you have sodium plus. By moving this, right, if I move this, right, where is it going? It's going here. It's going to display. Because this is written in Fisher projection, this is almost saying that it's written in 3D. So think about it. What kind of reaction am I doing? SN2 reaction. Because this nucleophile is strong and the base is strong. By looking at this, this is secondary, therefore this works. Automatically, I know that this is a water inversion. Whatever I now form is now gonna be a water inverted. 
or by doing a backside attack, I have what we call an umbrella effect. And therefore, this is what it is now. To verify this, we can assign configuration for it. The stereo chemistry for this is, if I know that this is one, this is two, this is four, this is three, this goes from what? One, two, three, hydrogen is pointing in plane, therefore this is, this was R, but it's what? S. So let's look over here, if we got the right thing. This is not as one, this is what? Two, four, three. Let's go from one, two, we have three, hydrogen in plane, this is counterclockwise, it was S, but it was R. By water inversion, I just went from S to R, so therefore it's correct. That concludes today.